We have our basic layout and we already have our text. Now basically we just need to take a look at our design principles to improve the look of our cover. The basic principles we should consider are contrast or emphasis, repetition, alignment, and proximity. We've already talked about proximity in terms of the title of the book and its location. Now let's take a look at the titled Secret Garden. That's probably the most important part of the book, being the title of the book that gives you a little more idea of what the book's about. And we want to give it a little bit more contrast to make it stand out more. So let's open up our layers panel. I'm just going to click on it to bring it back. I don't really need my paragraph styles or my character styles panel at this point. So I'm going to leave my layers panel open along with my character panel. I want to select the secret garden layer. And what I want to do is again, bring a little bit more contrast to the title of the book. So it brings more emphasis and makes it stand out more. So what I can do to improve its contrast, I'm going to click the layer styles icon at the bottom of the layers panel and I'm going to select stroke. Adding a stroke to a color can make it stand out a lot more. And here we see just the default black and how just applying that makes the title stand out and pop out a lot more than just leaving it as a solid orange. Let me go ahead and hide that style so you can see the difference. So here you can tell just by adding that little bit brings out a whole new level to this cover and it does bring out some of our design principles and we can see why contrast or emphasis is important. I'm going to go ahead and click on my color picker box here next to color for the stroke and I'm going to pick a shade of green and I'm going to make it a dark green. So instead of using a black stroke, I'm going to use a color that kind of makes more sense and goes with our layout. Now I could keep it black because I think those hinges on the door are black or maybe a deep brown, but since greens go with gardens, I'm going to see if I can find a dark green that looks good. Okay, that's a really dark green. I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice that we can change the size of the stroke by simply adding to the structure of it. I'm going to up it just a little bit. Now keep in mind when I'm looking at it right now, I'm looking at it at under 50% of its size. So the appearance is going to be a little different than when I zoom in. And we'll take a look at that in a second. The position of the stroke, it can be placed inside the letter on the center of essentially the line where the stroke would be or on the outside. By default it's set on the outside. If we want to thin that up just a little bit if we chose center you'll see now it's actually what you would consider your stroke it's now centered on that line rather than laying on the outside of the line. So here it is centered over the top of it. And here's that blend mode again that we talked about previously so we can actually cause a blend with the stroke color with the color that's beneath it on the layer below. I'm going to leave that at normal. And opacity, we can also change whether or not the color is bleeding through from below. And fill type. So here we can add a gradient to a stroke color or we can add a pattern. Now I'm going to go ahead and just leave this as a solid color, but I just want to point out that you now can add gradients and patterns to strokes. And we'll look at that in the next section. Now another thing we can do here is we can add a drop shadow. You can see how that adds just a little better contrast to our title. Also notice under the structure settings I have the distance and the size set at 5 pixels. Again let me show you without it, I'll show you with it. We can see how that adds just a little bit more contrast to our title. Again we've got the blend mode, here's the color, and what I was told a long time ago by a designer is that shadows really aren't black, they're just a darker color where the shadow's coming off. So in our case, it would probably be either the stroke or the fill color of our letters. So black really isn't the true color. And the mark of a real good designer, they said, was if you didn't use black as your shadow. So let's go ahead and change this. Now we can even use a deep, deep orange as our shadow, or we can go with off of our stroke. So I'm going to use a dark orange color and I'm going to click OK. And again, let's see it without and let's see it with. And you can see that it has brought emphasis to our title. I'm going to click OK. 
and I'm gonna leave it like that. Now, what's neat about layer styles is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna going to use the same layer style over again. One of the neat things about layer styles is that we can actually copy a layer style and then apply it to another layer. Let's go ahead and do that in this case and see what happens to our author name. So I'm gonna right click on the secret garden in my layers panel. I'm gonna choose copy layer style and I'm gonna right click on the author's name on the layer and choose paste layer style. And here I'm definitely gonna to wanna to zoom in. Let me change my tools panel real quick. Here I'm gonna zoom in. And again, now you can see the effect on the letters for Secret Garden. And remember in our layers panel, I can click off the visibility icons for the individual styles that I've added. So you can see here what that effect is having on the letters up close. And that's at 100% now. So that's actually at the size that it would print. I'm come, gonna come up here. Now, the stroke obviously is gonna be way too large on this one because the letters are much smaller. So I'm gonna double click on effects to open up my layer styles box. I'm gonna go down to stroke and I'm gonna bring that down. That font has a much thinner letter to it than the one we used on the title. So let me bring that down a little bit and let me change the position to outside. And what that does is it moves, again, the location of my stroke, so it gives me more of my fill part of my, uh, my letter, and it makes my letters obviously a lot more readable. And the stroke color looks fine. We can actually reuse the same stroke color and drop shadow that we used from the Secret Garden. It seems to work here just fine. And because we used a light green color on the letters and we're repeating the same color of the stroke, our shadow seems to fit in just fine too. So that's a way to, to show repetition. Repetition is the reuse of some of your elements on your page inside your design. So in our case here, we're using our stroke color and our drop shadow, but you can easily see we've also used it in trying to use repetition of colors in other places as well because we pulled up that orange color from the color of the brick. I'm gonna click OK. Let me double click on my hand to reset my workspace so that we can zoom out to see what it's taking to look like. Notice that the name of the author is a lot more readable in this instance. Let me go ahead and click on print size to see how this looks again at print size. Notice we're at 60% in this case, but we wanna get a better idea of what it would look like when it prints. And the, the images look fine for some reason the letters of the Secret Garden to me are looking a little blurry. Let me go ahead and look at that at 100% again. And it looks nice and crisp. And so does the author's name. So I think we're gonna be okay there. Okay, so just to recap quickly, there's four main principles of design that everyone should consider when you're working on any kind of graphic design element, whether it's for here a book cover, it could be a business card, it could be a postcard, it could be a web page. Our contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Here we noticed we used the colors and the size of our text to create contrast or emphasis is another term with the title of the book. We used repetition in the colors that are used. We took the orange from the brick and we used that in the title of the book. And then we also reused our stroke color on our author to tie those two items together, those texts together. Alignment, I'm sure you're all familiar with alignment. We use that a lot just in word processing. But in our case here, we used left alignment on the words in the title of the book, The Secret Garden. Each word is left aligned. And then we have the author's name is centered with the title of the book. So we've got two alignments going on there. And we could even go into the fact that the title of the book is centered inside the door, another type of alignment. So you can align, obviously working with words and paragraphs and you know, like we do in word processing, but you can also bring alignment into graphic elements. And then proximity, we talked about that previously, the title of the book, The Secret Garden, and putting it inside the door to show proximity to the secret garden, the title of the book obviously, and the door, and that being the passageway or the entrance into that garden and giving us more a little concept of what the story is going to be about. 
Okay, I think we've got enough here on our children's cover. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm just gonna do a file save. And I'm gonna save it into my chapter five folder. Here it's named children cover. I do wanna keep my layers so that if I wanna come back and make any modifications, I can. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave this open as we begin our adult cover.